go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this channel. Welcome to my special guest, Allie Martin. And I am Kim Copeland. Very excited to have Allie join us today. Um, we are going to just talk to Allie all about her life, her history, how she got in interested in humanities and has become what I call a humanitarian, um, helping so many people with your teaching and also with uh, your YouTube channel. And I just am interested in finding out more about you, Allie. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. And I just want to bless this time um, together because we have, this is a, a, a about third attempt with the internet going out. And maybe if we bless it, it's going to, this is it. That's right. <laughs> and I'm in my car, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you're always ready to go, honestly. You, you seem to be just enthusiastic about life. And that, I really appreciate that about you. I've never seen you say one negative thing about anybody or anything right so um i try not to yeah yeah it's things. hard sometimes well yeah. yeah but yes yeah. i know <laughs> anyway so tell me about how did you become interested in humanities when i was in college um i had always been interested i wanted to be a teacher but I, did, I wasn't a teacher for many years, but when I was in college, they started a new program in interdisciplinary studies. And everybody said, don't do that because you'll never get a job. And I said, no, that's what I wanna do because I like to connect things. And so that's really what started that road, going down that road. And then when I got my master's 22 years later, um, I found one in humanities and I was happy, as, you know, very happy about that. Interesting. So it's the connecting together. See, I feel like this is a theme through your life because that's what you're doing now on your YouTube channel too. So mm -hmm. you're connecting people. Mm -hmm. So, and I right. know you yeah. told me in, before that you that you also teach English and humanities, uh -huh. and humanities has art and what else? A philosophy. Yeah, philosophy, uh, literature, and uh, music. I mean, it's part of. I mean, I don't teach music, but it's part of the curriculum. So, oh, okay. yeah. But you have to know music, I guess, because it's part of, I guess. You being have to know musical. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a, And I was noticing, too, that music is um, a universal language for helping raise your vibration. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Just before we uh, came on this morning, I've I've been pulled to Green Tara, who is the female bodhisattva and i've been listening to her uh, 108 uh, chants to her to her uh, and so now i've got that in my mind and that was a really nice meditation that was very grounding nice thank god yes. for you too yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna listen to that i um i've been really focusing on mother mary but that's but i want to talk about you so um okay so when you said okay the humanities and um, art, music, philosophy. So onto the philosophy part, um, that kind of goes with metaphysics, I would think, or, or does it? It, does. I... it goes, it, no, it does. It goes with organized religions because they're philosophies. Like Buddhism is a philosophy. It's not really a religion. Um, so you've got, um, you've got that in there and you've got um, some, um, ethics and it just it's so big but you just sort of taking a little bit of it and teaching it and making having people be um able to uh, have a taste of these things that they may yeah. not know about uh-huh yeah. so <clears throat> and so in in so you are interested in buddhism i believe i mean as what you've talked about mm -hmm. um so how did or how and when did that come about for you when I was uh, in my master's degree program, um, there were lots, and it was very interesting because I went, I was living near Houston at the time, and they had this wonderful master's program at uh, Houston Baptist University, and they would never have let you take a Buddhism or Hinduism or anything if you were undergraduate, but because we were liberal arts humanities, we took it and we went to all the temples and I learned all about their, what they, you know, and, and I just felt like 
I resonated with it. Um, I feel like I just take a little bit from here and a little bit from there because I really like Taoism and I, I like a lot of a lot of different things and I feel pulled toward them depending on what's going on with me. Yeah. Uh-huh. And can, so, to, so what is Taoism? Uh, if you've not heard of the Tao Te Ching, I have. Yeah, yes. it, it, that's what it is, but it is it means the way uh -huh. and the philosopher is Lao Tzu. And yes. um, it's, it's very um, much understanding that we all are on a path and that we, if we follow the path, then we follow the Tao. And um, it's just wisdom. It's, I, I, every day I read a, a page from, from this and it's, a, it's just wisdom. And it's, some of it is very simple, simple stuff that we already really know, but we just need to be reminded about. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Yeah. I'm not that familiar. I mean, I know the, the words, but I'm not that familiar with the study of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so also now, you know, there, I mean, I know there's so many avenues I want to, or so many things I want to ask you. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about how you got started, just your interest in metaphysics. And did you come from a metaphysical family or, you know, how did that all come about? So about 1970, I used to hunt the bookstores and they, they didn't have very many things. They didn't have a metaphysical section. <laughs> they didn't have a lot of, of, of information at all on anything and it. I was hungry for it. And I found a book about astrology. So I bought that and I kind of doubt, you know, I didn't do a chart or anything, but I started learning about that at that time. That was uh, when I was in high school. And then later on, um, you know, now you can go into a bookstore, you have a whole wall of, of these kinds of things that you didn't have before. Yes. Um, but later on, you know, I became interested and I took karate classes. So I learned the, the soft and the hard way. And um, then afterwards, um, you know, I, I joined a metaphysical community of people that kind of like what we have now, but we have an internet, <laughs> but it was in people's houses. And we used to have, you know, different things that we talked about. And I learned an awful lot about stones. And I learned about channeling. And I learned, you know, I don't channel, but I mean, I learned all those things at that time. Uh -huh. And I also learned the Native American religion, and what their ceremonies were, which I really love as well. It's hard yeah. to pick one. They're all yes. really good. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you on that on the um of the Native American, I mean, exactly. And maybe, is that even a religion? Or is it just more of a philosophy too? Right, they just, it is a philosophy, you know, how they believe about um, the Earth Mother and, you know, um, very nice, me uh, they call me you know, medicine is the praying and, you know, it's, it's just really beautiful. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. really yeah, is. the medicine wheel yeah. and shamanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I took my kids to like, medicine wheel and they, my, my son, said oh my god I said hey it could be worse we could have gone to some other thing and, you know you you learned a little bit about it at the time but my my mom was um she was fairly uh intuitive so but there really wasn't anybody that um was in my family that was psychic or anything like that but they were very my parents were very open to uh different things that I did and um never you know, my, and my mom died first. So my dad was around, he even bought me uh, medicine cards when, when oh. for Christmas one year, you know, so he was very open to it. Yeah, oh, really nice. Yeah. Oh, what a That's sweet nice. man. So, and you told me earlier um, about that you're the youngest in your family. So you were the right. baby, baby angel that came along later in life <laughs> uh, to your parents and that you were the little angel, the, the girl that was the angel, you know, compared to your brothers, I guess. Yeah. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. the dog doesn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's painters across the sea. Oh, it's okay. okay. It's okay. I have, I have animals. I, have... I understand. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if she um, if she doesn't. Okay. I'll pause it here. I may put her in a okay. room. I think I will. Just a second. I'm going to pause. Okay. All right. Oh, I, actually, I'm just going to cut it out. Just a second, because if I, yeah, yeah, no, she's okay. I think she's okay. We'll keep, we'll keep going. Okay. Love her. I still, <laughs> I'm still trying to <laughs> cut that out. Hopefully, I can do that. Um, so I am because when you told me a few minutes ago about being the youngest, <clears throat> I truly did see these silver 
you know, because I'm more C, you know, and I saw right. you as a little girl, you looked to me when I, when you were talking about your childhood, you looked to me like three or four years old and I saw these silver white angel wings on you. And so wow. I just bet that you were a little angel in the house. <laughs> it, I was, I, when I was younger, um, my brothers doted on me because they were 10 and 15, uh, 13 years older than me. And so they, they left by the time I was eight. But in that time period, um, my father, when I was two years old, went to, into a TB hospital because he had TB. And he was, he was gone for probably a year. Oh and my I, you know, I, I could see him from, from the window at the hospital, but I think that really traumatized me. And somebody did my astrology and said, your father went away when you were two years old. They thought it was forever, but no, he did come back. And we were, we were sidekicks, you know, we really were. But my brother and I, my older brother and I, he was, he was the man and he, he took me everywhere. Took me to, I really think so. <laughs> we send understanding. You know, we, that's right. We wing it. Yeah. We wing when we have to do it. <laughs> and we are sending understanding to everybody because, everybody. Uh, I mean, and I feel this so much from you and that's why I, I feel like I'm just. I, I'm your little, um, I don't know, just, I just adore you. I would just say that because oh, I just feel like your, your heart is so, I just feel your heart. And I, another thing that I notice about you is that you're very humble. And oh, yeah. I, I feel yeah. like you have so much more talent that you're actually even letting us know about. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, I've done, I've been there, done that for so long, but, um, you know, I, I, when I was younger, I was in plays and I used to sing. I won a singing contest and um, I've tried, I've done all kinds of different work and, and everything, but I always have been a teacher. When I was 14, they used to uh, allow us at Future Teachers to go out to the elementary schools for the day and teach in a classroom with the teacher, but the teacher would always leave. And I was 14 years old and I was teaching fifth graders. I loved it. It was like, whoa, oh. this is it. My um, goodness. So, so I always had that that kind of teaching thing, but I really didn't become a teacher until I was uh, 45 years old or 44. Wow. Years. Well, I'm assuming you were teaching in other ways, but maybe it just in other ways paid for it. That's, and that's what uh, Bob said when I had my Akashic records done. He said that my, um, I also was on a scene, which I don't. Yeah. So I just was, I, I felt it was wonderful, but yes, you're right. Um, I did say on my show the other day that um, I was supposed to, I, I just got leveled up to this new position, but it took me a long time because the Dean wanted me to start spouting all this stuff about myself, how wonderful I was and how the, the kids like me and all that stuff. And I said, you know what? I just don't feel comfortable doing that. She said, "You look at this evaluation. This person, all these people said they liked you. You got to say that. I said, but some people don't, you know, I, I said, this is really hard for a Buddhist to do. It really is because you're supposed to suspend ego. Uh -huh. And uh, and, and I, I have my days, I can't, you know, <laughs> I just can't, I, I have those ego times, but I'd like to think that I was walking my talk and not just, you know, saying, well, you know, I'm a Buddhist, but not, I'm not going to act like one, you know, so. Uh-huh, yeah, I like, see, see what I'm saying? And the other day mm -hmm. when I saw your video, uh, you were doing the Oracle cards and you said, oh, uh, you know, I, I'm not really, I really can't do this. And, you know, and then you did this great spread. <laughs> it's like, whoa. And then, oh no, I'm not psychic. But then, yeah, I talked to my guys this morning. They gave me, I got their names and messages. And it's like, no, I'm not psychic. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Ellie. That was a shock. Yeah, that was a complete shock to me. But it was right after that Akashic Records um, time with Bob, the next day, these, all these voices, I haven't heard them since. So I got to find a way to get back to that, but. It was really wonderful. It was because all these dead people came and talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I mean, they I mean they just have lost their body, right? Right, right. right you know, right. I mean, I know you know that. You're right. on the uh, other side. Yeah. yeah, on the other side, right? On the and like you know, and I don't even know the different levels of you know. We could probably spend a lot of time just talking about that. I don't, but I don't even want to pretend to know. Right. You know what I mean, or the different yes, plans. So. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, so your mother was intuitive, 
but not yeah. a psychic. Um, right. She was open. And so she was. Uh, when my brother was in Vietnam, she um, she knew twice. He was in an accident where he went through a window, and she sat bolt up in bed and knew something was wrong with him. And then when he had a house collapse on him, um, uh, he he was a fire rescue. My, my, you could hear my mother scream, Doug, like that. And um, she just knew something. And, and that she knew, she knew. But it wasn't like she practiced knowing anything, but she was also extremely sensitive. She couldn't, you couldn't argue with the woman, you know. You just I see. Yeah. Well, yeah. in today's times, she may have developed herself more, you know. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I, I would like to think so, yeah. Yeah. Or even if she didn't, but maybe she'd be, no, you know, it's just more acceptable now to. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, even now we have people that aren't as accepting, but most of, most of the time there's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I decided yeah. Uh, today I'm, I'm separating my business pay, Facebook page versus my personal. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, I, I have always, but it's, every once in a while it slips in there on my personal page. And yeah. it's people it's start judging you. Yeah, yeah. is that weird? I, I don't. I don't like that. Yeah, I right. have a problem with judgment. I do. And so, what I noticed—that's another thing. Talking about judgment is that I feel like you know I have heard this so many times on your channel. Well, anybody who wants to come chat, you know, just let me know and we'll have a chat. Um, you know, and I just think it's we'll so get wonderful. A lot of shakers. <laughs> you don't? Maybe they're not real. Well, I mean. I yeah, I, I put it out there on the on the tarot love community and said, you know, anybody want to come and riff with me? We don't even have to talk. You know, we can talk about just a topic when that's what I do with Renee and Andrea. Sometimes we just pick a topic and we talk about it. That's all. It's fun. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Um, like okay. So and I want to find out you said karate. So now are you still or do you still do karate? I don't, and I wish I, I wish I did. When I was uh, in my 30s, I did. That was the only time my mother kind of flipped out. She thought it was weird. And, <laughs> and my brother said, leave her alone. That's great. That's good exercise. It's self-defense. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. But yeah, I got up to almost a, a brown belt. And I was in this program where I was working toward teaching others, you know, at the same time, it was great for me and lost a lot, you know, a lot of weight. I was in good shape. And then I hurt my back and over my neck or whatever, oh, and I geez. moved. But now um, I have a tape of all the forms I did at that time. And now if you slow those down, that's like a Tai Chi. So I still have the muscle memory, even though it's been 30 years. Uh-huh, so, nice. Yeah, I'm surprised, yeah, um, it's kind yeah. of fun. Yeah, because I think it's very centering, right? You learn to center. Definitely. Yeah. And so this is yeah. something that you've been doing all these years. Uh -huh. I, I mean, fun. really, I, you know, you, you've <clears throat> had an amazing life, you know, it's, it's, and also such a wonderful parents that kind of brought you into this brought me along. You know, space. Yeah, they did. I, picked, I picked some good ones, didn't I? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah, they probably yeah. picked you. You know, you guys picked each other. <laughs> we did we did you know it's funny when I uh start my class uh usually in person if I'm in an in-person class we get to know each other in the class and so what I ask truths and one lie to them so don't tell them which one's the lie and so they do but I, then I say well it's only fair that I do the same thing so here's my three and you you figure out which is the truth and I say, I've lived in 11 states. I've been married four times. Um, and I have a black belt in karate. And oh God, they can't figure it out. Oh no, you've never been married that many times. Oh, you haven't lived that many places. And I said, the wrong, the I don't have a black belt in karate. I, I, and so they go, what? <laughs> I can't believe I've been, for one thing that I've been married four times. And I said, remember my generation, you didn't live with people. You married people, you, you know, you don't want to live in sin, you know, until I got older and wiser, you know, but um, yeah, it, it took me a while. I didn't really find my soulmate till, um, you know, I was 45. So 
Don't give uh -huh. up anybody. <laughs> okay. Well, I've known people getting married even in, in their 80s and like yep. being their best, True. their best marriage. Uh -huh. Best one. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, and your husband's name is Keith? It's Keith. Yeah. He's Keith. a chiropractor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. G mm -hmm. Great. Um, and you guys have been married since you were 45. Yeah. We've been married 21 years this year. Wow. Yeah. And the other Thanks. marriages were only like, Three, three, and ten, I think it was. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he's the, he's the longest. Yeah, he's the longest. Congratulations. Student. Oh, yes. I finally settled down. <laughs> <laughs> but he's metaphysical, too. He just doesn't like to put too much out there. And um, he, that he started the channel with me, and then he got a little, you know, so he comes on our manifest meetings, or he did until he got this other job. So he's, he's very supportive of whatever I want to do. So that, uh -huh. that's cool. Well, that's what you have to have, I think, you know, in today's, in today's world. I yep. <clears throat> can imagine otherwise. Okay, I want to see what other things I want to ask you about. So um, yep. now, I know you just recently took an Oracle card. I think you did just recently this week. Um, studied a little bit more on the Oracle cards. And so how are you liking that? And are you going to bring that to your channel? Are you going to start doing Oracle cards on your channel? It's funny that you, uh, I was watching Andrea and Danny Shay. Uh, they, last night they were doing world topics or something like that. And they were pulling cards. And so I said, oh, you guys are so much fun. I said, I'd love to come on with my Oracle cards when you do this next time. So Danny said, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll you know. So I, I feel more comfortable with the Oracle cards because the message is easier to discuss cipher if that makes sense yes um the tarot to me is is just really complicated and i really admire people that can do those cards because to me that's confusing and you know it's one way or the other way and oracle cards are just one way <laughs> you know uh -huh. one you don't read them in reverse in other words so i mm -hmm. do like them and i've got a lot of different decks so uh-huh it's okay um, yes i like the oracle cards too and i agree with you on the tarot um you know, I do, I do play around with the tarot, but it's not my, yeah, not yeah. my best. Oh, well, I do too, but I don't read for anybody. Yeah. No, no. Uh, and, you know, to me, I, I like going within, and I think you do the same. Finding your own intuition within, like finding right. your own tarot card or your own clear audience message versus, you know, to me, looking at a card. Uh, you know, just like reading the book. Yeah, reading the book listening. and making sure it's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The feeling within yourself, the strength within yourself to bring forward the message. I would love for you to do that. I mean, of course, I'm going to, you know, be watching <laughs> if you do. Yeah. Well, here it goes. Hopefully, you know, it, it's fun. Um, I think I like it better, too, because I don't, I have a feeling, I don't want to tell somebody something bad. If I had to tell them something bad, I would tell it in a good way as much as I could that this, cause it's that really only potential bad. I think it's what's going on with the energies of the day, but I'm not, um, you know, I don't also want to sugarcoat things for people, you know, yes. and I've heard other Taylor readers say that, Oh, you're too positive or whatever. And, um, you know, I think it's a hard call, especially if you see something that just keeps being really negative. So yeah, yeah. no, I think you, we always have to be very sensitive to the information and yeah, how we yeah. it into, because words yeah. are powerful. They are. You, um, so yeah. they can never be taken away. Right. Yeah. yeah. Can't so, take them uh, back. Yeah. Cannot take them back. But yes, yeah, so I just really want to honor the uh, what I feel again is your this whole role of your life as being a humanitarian because you're helping people, mm -hmm. you're teaching humanities, you're help you know you must be. Do you happen to know your numerology? Do you know if you're a number nine? Because number nine is a humanitarian. You're four. Oh, okay, the planner. <laughs> that sounds about right. I love paperwork. I used to be a tax preparer for thirty years. And I did mortgage lending and all that. And I'm terrible in math, really bad, but it's, you know, on the computer. yeah. So, you know, people would say, well, aren't you a business teacher? No, I'm not, you know, but I used to do during tax season, I used to do taxes and do classes. I've worked the last uh, probably 20 years. I've worked more than one job 
uh, at a time. I'm sort of burnt out from that. You know, that's why I cut back and I stopped doing taxes. I do my own and my family and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I just, I, I've had a lot of jobs that you probably go, what? Yeah, and so, <laughs> uh-huh. so now you just teach at multiple universities and have a YouTube channel. That's all. I do. Yeah. When I was doing <laughs> Taxes, though, I was tr I was teaching because I was telling people you need to make sure you do this and that and this and that. So it was a teaching sort of thing. But yeah, I don't know when I don't have enough to do. I don't want to do it. I don't know if that makes any sense. Oh, okay. It's like the that I am, then I I'm more encouraged to keep going and doing and going and doing. But you know, you do get really worn out after a while especially during this pandemic with all the other shit we were excuse me the other stuff we were seeing so yes yeah. yes uh-huh it's amazing that we came out of the pandemic and what have you noticed um i mean i'm sure we've all noticed something during that time uh, um at least what i notice is that there's big huge explosion in spiritual awakening would you agree with that i agree yes the time I, I sort of get the message that, okay, everybody, you've been preparing now for this and you're here now. And we got some people that are kind of new, so bring them along. But, you know, this is what we've been waiting to do. This is all because quite honestly, when, when in the nineties, when I was working in spiritual metaphysical community, um, I, you know, even became like this minister of, of this, uh, internet church or whatever so I could marry people I did that and I did a lot of other things at that time including studying about the earth changes that were supposed to happen in the 90s in the early 2000s mm -hmm. and it never did and uh -huh. I got really sounds really awful but I got really discouraged about it it was uh -huh. it, it's like you know what but apparently at that time a lot of things shifted because, as you know, if you get a lot of people together that want to change the energy, the energy will change. So, it, and but that's hard to explain to people. Oh, well, you said this was going to happen and it didn't, you know. So, mm -hmm. but now I really do believe we thought maybe 2012, but no, I, you know, if you take 2012 and turn around the two and the one to. Oh, yeah. You know, there you go. So we got the same year as 2012. Yes, I never put that together like that. Yeah, isn't that wow. it's a is it a five? I can't remember. Um, I think that is a five. It's a five year. Yeah, five year. So yes, you, here we are. What does that? Do you know what that means in numerology? Change. I, oh. Change. <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. doesn't it? it? Does. And interesting. Right. And so it's almost like the. Um, I would say mag magnifying of 2012 is what we are doing now. We, we're yeah. coming back around to it in a much bigger way. Yes. That's definitely. how it feels. Yes. Because people were ready at that time. They, a lot of people were just, the star seeds were just maybe growing up, you know, but now they're older as well. And everybody's uh, searching for something. And the great thing is, is that we have this platform that we can use uh, to reach those people. And, you know, they don't have to like everything that we do, but um, that's, that's why I like it so much, like the humanities. I'll tell you a little bit about it. If you're interested, then you can go check it out. But if you're not interested, then just forget it. You know, I'm not telling you that this is going to work. It may not work, you know. Yeah, yeah. When I listen to you guys talking to angels or, you know, hearing your guides or that to me is fabulous because... I don't have that ability. I mean, I'm only starting to have that little tiny bit of an ability, but I resonate completely once something is said and I feel, you know, like that that's true. Like Susan had something on last night and I was like, wow, this is really resonating, you know? I, I heard that I did the same thing. I listened to her and I thought, yes, I got the same. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, amazing. Her guides were who <laughs> yes, well, and well, she's a hoot, right? You know, the way she presents them. And, um, yes. but I feel yes. like you have much, you know, you say you're just starting at this. I just feel like maybe you just don't realize it, you know? And I think maybe you're, well, is, uh, I'm guessing, I don't know you, Allie, but I feel like it might be very clear audience 
for you. And that's like yeah, knowing it seems your mind. To come in here. Yeah. 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 And isn't Claire's sentience knowing something? Just knowing it? Is that what Claire's sentience is? Claire's sentience no. is knowing the feeling, like using your oh, okay. gut feeling. Okay. That's another way of knowing the gut, right? right? The gut tells you. Yeah. But the clear mm -hmm. cognizance okay. is in the brain. Like I know it and I don't know where I know it, but I usually feel that like in the back of the brain. But uh -huh. um, and then of course, you know, but I feel like you're clear. Uh, the clear audience is you can also uh, see words in your head or oh. hear words in your head. It doesn't have to be outside your head. Most of the time it's actually not. That's, that's where I heard the words green Tara. And I'm like, okay, I've heard of her before, but what do I need to know? And so then I went and found out. So the teacher in me says, I got to check it out, you know? Yes. So I have a book, you know? Yeah. Yes. I, I, I would imagine your library is very full. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably have a, a, a sale of your library on YouTube. Hilly, show your books. Anybody want to buy a book? <laughs> really? And my husband would probably kiss them because, you know, he says, you have so much stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go ahead. No, it's okay. So I want to ask, you now I know you have kids. Are your kids, now I don't, I don't know that much about your children. I think you have two. Um, mm -hmm. Are they also interested in this kind of like the either humanitarian work or metaphysics? Well, I, I exposed them all to a lot of different things when they were growing up. And I even took them, you know, to Unity Church or Science of Mind and that kind of thing. But we weren't really churchgoers. But, you know, if they wanted to go, we'd go or we, you know, they'd come along. But my son is a diehard atheist, but he's probably the most humanitarian person you've ever met. He went to a Christian school in fifth grade and he was the only kid that really wasn't a Christian. And he got the uh, Christian Character Award <laughs> because he's such a, he's such a nice kid. So wow. you know he he um he has he has that quality. He's very kind and very loving person. Uh, my daughter is a marriage and family counselor, and she's sort of a Buddhist, I would say. Uh -huh. um, and she's she's very accepting of things, but she isn't like I am yet. Uh, she's not you know, involved in the community. They both know I have a YouTube channel and they thought, oh, good for you, mom. Because my, uh -huh. my son would always say, oh, mom's going to show up in her Buddhist garb. You know, <laughs> he, he, he's the funny guy. He used to, he used, he went to Second City Comedy and he he was a, a stand-up guy for a while, but now he's not doing it anymore. But it was uh, a lot of, it was a lot now, of fun. Now, do you have Buddhist garb? No. Okay. <laughs> I have the I have the, um, there's a, a, like a scarf that when I went to see the Dalai Lama, who was in um, Seattle, probably about 10, 15 years ago, I was just, it was wonderful. It was in this big thing. And I bought these white, I can't remember the name of them, but they're like a thing that you put on somebody at, it, to bless them. They're just like a white scarf. That's yes. All. But yes. no, I don't have the the orange outfit or and I didn't shave my head so I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not into that uh -huh, but uh -huh. I have short hair but that's it yes and then I'm familiar with those white things I remember I saw um yeah. do you know who Amma is yes I yeah, do no, the, the yes. hugging say yeah I and her when I saw her and I, I think it was in Seattle as well um oh okay and we all had the white and we were supposed to all wear white right right there's Amma and there's a few others that are um, pretty interesting folks, you know, that to, to, to go see. Um, mm -hmm. But the Dalai Lama to me is the epitome of compassion and kindness. There's yes. just nobody I've ever seen that maybe, maybe uh, Mother Teresa, you know, but mm -hmm. those two people mm -hmm. are the most, I think, mm -hmm. that I know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. I was going to, I know there's, oh, have you thought about, doing some channeled writing <laughs> with your newfound, you know, I think Let's it's see. clear audience that would be really kind of interesting to do, even if it was just for like two minutes a day, just a little bit. Oh, you know, I have journals. I have probably, I go through two journals a month, 
I write all the time, but not, uh -huh. not that way. But um, uh -huh. um, that's a possibility. My husband was saying he, th he knows how to regress or get you hypnotized. He yes. was going to do that and see if my higher self would come through and talk. So he was willing. He said, I think we should try that, you know, so maybe we'll do that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I would be so interested to see too on your, on your, have you done that? Have you done that? With channeled your, writing? Well, a little. Oh, the regression? No channeled writing. Well, just a little, you know, I oh, feel okay. like, um, yeah, a little bit. I wouldn't say I am working on it. actually this morning. I did write a little bit and the other day and I, you know, one of the things I was, I thought, you know, how do you know, right? My imagination, but I feel like, <laughs> Um, my spirit person was telling me that we are all stars. Like if you look up in the sky, we could be one of those stars. That's how big we are, that we don't even know how big we are here on earth. We just think we're this, or maybe we are, you know, three feet out from our body. Right. <laughs> but really. But don't our, our chakras keep going, don't they? Don't you have like 40 11. of them or something? Yeah, yeah. three above, right. So, okay. and then, you know, below also. Yeah. The earth, star. Yeah. so um, but we're bigger than that, even right. And I felt like they were saying that we all, you know, just who knows which star it is. You're looking up in the sky, maybe that's your star, kind of thing. Like we, we're really yes. that bright that we don't even know how bright we are. That's very true. That's yes, very true. we tend to be the worst critic of ourselves. We just we are, we're hard on ourselves. And that's the thing I got this morning is about the judgment for ourselves. We are the only ones judging us. Right. Absolutely. And when we die, the same thing. Yes. And they say, they say that you go through um, the feelings and thoughts of the people that you have interacted with. And that's enough damnation for <laughs> that's a kind of a hell, you know, and yeah. because you're getting how they felt during that, that and how you you're on the other side of that and that's kind of scary if you not that i'm afraid of to die or anything but it you know there are things that we've done that we're probably not real proud of you know oh yes and, i know yeah yeah but it's true we are the worst judge we, we judge ourselves the worst i that was the message this morning i wrote a whole page on it but i you know it's not with me to good <laughs> good i like that yeah <laughs> Yes. Okay. So was there anything that you wanted to share about yourself that maybe, um, well, I know you said also you had a little imaginary friend, Billy, when you were little, but is there anything else you want to share? Do you want to share about that or anything else you want to share with us today? Um, I, um, I did. I, I was always talking to this little imaginary friend. And so I feel like people need to listen to young children when they talk because, and not go, oh, right, sure, you know, or, or to poo poo anything that they say they see. Because my son went through an experience where he could see my spirit guide and even knew the, the lady's name, which he had no way of knowing when he was about two. And a friend of mine was driving and her son was in a, in a car seat in the back. And he's looking at him, him, his hands and his arms. And his mother said, what's wrong? And he said, well, I was a different color last time. <laughs> and, so, you know, anybody else might go, oh, my God, that kid's crazy. But he isn't crazy. He probably remembers being either, you know, darker skin or maybe albino. Who knows? Um, but we discount children and, and that is when they're in their most pure state and you can, you could really ask them lots of questions and they could give you lots of answers because they're in that open thing. And then we shut down because I really don't care for public school. That's, I mean, I hate to say that as a teacher, but I feel like it shuts down the children, sit down, shut up, learn this. You can't, you know, and there, and it isn't until they really get to college where they can, Oh, take a breath. You mean you want to know what I think? You mean you want, oh, and I'm like, yeah. And th they don't get, they're, they don't know what to say. A lot of them, especially the, uh, the younger children or the children that come from the Asian countries over, they, they don't know, they don't talk to their, even to talk to their teachers unless it's oh, you know, they're yeah. called on. So, mm -hmm. but 
Yeah, we've got to be more open to our kids and listen to them. That that's probably the only message I'd like to send more so. Uh, than, uh, and yeah, I can understand that. Even even mm-hmm. teenagers, right? Uh, or older ones that we that yes. Yep. And I think yep. they they may have even more needs. Um, they, I do remember when my son, well, when my daughter was about three. And she said, oh, baby brother, I may have even told you this, baby brother is an angel. And baby brother wasn't born yet. And um, yeah. I didn't even know there was a baby brother coming. So that was interesting that it was. he saw him as an angel. Right. And Before I remember was- another interesting yeah. time when my son was about in third grade. Um, and it was at Christmas break. So he was in between, you know, you know, at time where he could relax at home. Uh-huh. And um, he said, I'm seeing energy coming out of I, white lights coming out of my fingers and my knees and my feet. I see white light coming out of everything. And um, and then he said, what are all these animals doing in the house? And who is this? And oh, here's my. And then he had, saw this man that I knew was his guy. Jewel, he ended up naming him Jewel because he said he had, well, he had this. Uh, a sword and a knife and a, you know, all kinds of things for protection. You know, just, just what you think of with a third, a third grade boy yeah. with mom, that was a guy, you know, all the, all the weapons. Right. Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> he, that, that's guy, fabulous. he still yeah. sees, he still knows that guy is there and he knows he's the color is orange and everything. But, um, mm-hmm. and he would even walk around the block and this went on for about two weeks and they're all following me. Why is everybody following me? And then he forgot about them eventually. Kind of, kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, but he was able yeah. to see auras and everything for really up until I bet really? you. Wow. Yeah. And he's 19 that's now. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right mm-hmm. now, that's not interesting to him. <laughs> no, he's yeah. pretty much rejecting, you know, just. Uh, cool. Yeah. It's funny because when my kid, my kids were okay with me. They didn't reject me or what I thought. But between the time they were like 20 until they were probably in their 30s, which my son is 30, will be 37 now. My daughter is 44, but um, they um, they come around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the best way. That's the best way to say it. You know, they um, they they realize life is precious, and they're you know they want to see you more, or they want to you know they because who knows you know. Mm-hmm. And my son wouldn't call all the time, but now he moved out here to be closer to us. See, that's what I mean. Um, uh-huh. You know, so it's, and, and I just accepted it. He's growing up. He's, he's got his own life. He's got his thing to do. And, you know, that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it paid off, I guess is the way to say it, you know, so, mm-hmm. but I have to tell you one thing I have seen, I don't, I'm not a big seer, yes. but this, this was unbelievable. I was on a walk. And I live, of course, in Washington State with all the the big green evergreens. And I looked up and I saw the pollen come off of the trees. And I've never seen that before. I mean, maybe other people have, but I hadn't. It was like you could just see it. It was, you know, like a stream of water. Uh And it was visible to me. And I thought, wow, I wished I had a picture of it but wow. probably wouldn't have showed up anyway, but yeah. Yes. I don't know. Do you think it's pollen or was it berries? Well, it could have been that. <laughs> hey, I'm open. You know, I love being outside because I feel very close to, you know, everything, the spiritual side, you know, and very grounding. So it's kind of- Yes, nice. that nature is that nature does open up our spiritual selves. I know that for sure. It does. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, um, well, Ollie, I thank you so much for being here today. And I, I really appreciate you sharing everything you've sh- shared, your your private self. I feel like you've shared a lot about your private self and also about, you know, your kids. And and I really appreciate your message about children, too. I think we can all take that message. Yeah, Whether we have I children. So. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they really are. They're very wise. They're sometimes wiser than, mostly white. They can be wiser than we are. They know I, more. I, I know. I agree. Yeah. I think their DNA, I think it's even, you know, I think we're changing our it DNA. Is different. I agree. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds right. Well, thank you. And so tell me, okay, if people want to hear about your channel or hear what you're doing on your channel, okay. what is the name? 
Well, um, I am on Heart and Soul Connected, and it's one word all put together. And um, I'd like to have people come and talk. I call it riffing. It's like when you have a guitar and you're just playing all kinds of notes. Instead, we're talking about all kinds of things. We end up going down labyrinths sometimes, you know. But um, uh, we also have a manifestation uh, uh, once a once a month. And I really love collaborating. So I like collaborating with Kim and and with Susan and Andrea and Danny and all, everybody else. I feel like it builds where it's community building mm -hmm. and of course I also welcome anybody that's doesn't have a channel but wants to talk because we're here Kim's here and I'm here so you know yes. we need to do that but um and I'm also going to be taking Kim and Susan's um uh working with them in their class on the Claire's and I'm yes. thrilled I can't wait to start that'd so, be fun thank you so Next much week. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. I am so thrilled to thank have you. you. You're awesome. And um, really appreciate your time, Allie. Thank you. Kim. Okay. God bless you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.